Yes, I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, listening and fixing as a game master. Uh, this is a rather hard talk to do because everything I will talk about now is very practic practical uh, stuff we're going to talk about and I will do it in a theoretical way by talking about it, which might seem a little bit weird, but we'll try. I will try to do my best to give you some tools to work with this, but we'll see how it ends. Uh, first off, I'm going to talk a little bit and elaborate a little bit on what, what uh, Sean said about what is a Game Master. Uh, I've done the yoke way and writing down everything I'm going to say, so I don't forget stuff, but uh, yeah. The Game Master is someone who has the possibility in some way to control or take in control of the game that's often the person running the game, as Charles said. In a big game, you might need multiple GMs or NPCs that report into the blind game master, into a central intelligence that is somewhere outside the, the actual game. Because you can't, uh, as a game master, if you have 150 participants, you can't see them all. And GMing is very, very much about listening in and seeing the players or the characters. Uh, or you can have multiple game masters that having the right to take their own initiatives. If you do this, you must make sure that the game masters either have the same vision of the game or so they all drive the, the game in the same direction. It is a little bit unlucky if, if Charles is telling half of the players that we're now going towards war. And I, as the other game master, say, now we're aiming for peace. Then we'll have a big conflict in this, in this game. So it's good to have the same vision. Or that you have different areas as game masters. I'm in, I'm, I'm in charge of, of game mastering uh, the love stories. And, and someone else is game mastering the war stories, or whatever. Uh, and who is not a game master is equally interesting. Uh, the, the one in control of practical and logistical parts of the game is not the game master. That one will just fix stuff for you. Make sure you have water, make sure you have shelter, make sure you have everything you need, food and stuff. And the NPCs, the non-player characters, they are not game masters. But they can help the game master. But they are not taking their own initiatives and doing stuff. They will only make sure that the Game Master is getting all the information the Game Master needs to be able to Game Master. And the writer and designer of the LARP is not the Game Master. But, as Charles said, it could well be the same person. But then, you're no longer in the role as the writer, the designer. You are now in the role as, as, as the Game Master. We might look at this as, as, as the guy or, or the person who is designing a chair. You have someone who designs the chair, and then you have someone who built the chair. It can be the same person. If it's not the same person, then there's, you either have to make very precise instructions on how to build the chair. You need to write exactly the diameter of the legs and how to put them in and the angle of the legs or whatever. Or you, as the designer, must be con content with that the, 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 the person actually building the chair or the game master might alter things. It might not be exactly the product that you wanted to build, but that's something you had to live with as you write or design a LARP and not GM it yourself. And that might be the case. We will come to that a little bit later on. Even if you do, are the same person, it might not end up in what you thought because you have players who will do magical stuff with your game that you as a game master might think be fucking up your LARP. But that's not, yeah. Uh, game mastering different type of games. Uh, you can, or, or different type, different style. This maybe is the wrong uh, headline here. We should maybe say different uh, game mastering in different ways. We have the, the active one, the influence of the events of the LARP, or the passive, letting the characters influence the events of the LARP. Letting the characters do, as Charles said, 
where I have worked, so I tell you what to do, what, what the rules of the LARP, and then you will go in as players and do the LARPing itself. And I won't influence as a game master the game at all. You will be in charge of everything. That is the passive game master. The important points <coughs> as a game master. You have, I will, I will divide this into three different parts. There are, of course, there are many more parts of LARP, but I will divide them into th LARP into three parts. We have the pre-game, we have the during the game, <coughs> and we have post-game or after the game. Pre-game, it's important to listen, and it's important to communicate. During the game, listening, following, listening, pushing and suggest. And after the game, listening and questioning. I will go through this a little bit more in detail, but as you see, listening is the most important lesson you will ever learn as a game master. It's the most important rule as the game master. Listen to the players. Pre-game listening. Listen to your players. This is before. This could be on forums before the game if you make a b b long preparations, if you have emails and if you have a, a Facebook group discussing things. Listen to the players, what do they want? How do they want it? And make sure you know their limits, visions and thoughts. What do they want? This can also be done through workshops and discussions beforehand. And it's important you do this because it will make your job as a game master much easier to make it a pleasant uh, experience for the players during the game. If you know what would make them happy, it's easier to make them happy. And then just a note, if you want a high bleeding fader, we're talking bleeding, this is a good time to get to know your players and push parts of them into their characters. This is also part of doing the game mastering. You can uh, alter faders through game mastering as well. Pre-game communicating. This is, might be the most important part of game mastering and one of the most important parts of all LARPs that is often forgotten. Communication. Communicate with your players. Communicate with, let the players ask questions. Let them, you must be able to answer everything they want to know. You need to communicate your vision to the players. This will make your role as a game master much easier. What do you expect from them? Do you expect them to read through a big pile of books or do you expect them to come there and be prepared to cry? Or what do you expect from them? And you should also tell them what tools you will use. I will go through a long list of tools in a while. And what tools will you use as a game master? And let them know, let the players know the tools you will use. Make them comfortable with the tools. This could be done both in written word or in workshops. You should try it out. We were trying that when we had When Our Destinies Meet. We tried to sort of show you here on stage how it will work. How will the freeze and focus scene work, for instance. That's a way of communicating the tools. So workshop is another way of game mastering. Workshop is a super effective way to communicate your vision and develop the characters, the group, the world, the culture. And this is also part of the game mastering. And from this point on, when the pre-game is over and we go into the actual game, it's the players that are in control of the game. Now the, game, the players will take control of the game and you are no longer the one controlling. What you can do from now on as a game master is you can try to get them to change direction. You can send in new information, but the players are now in control and that is super important to know. That is, if you try, if you try to change, if you try to break, to sort of pause the game and make it go into a completely different direction, you will make the players disappoint you. They, they will feel that you are in too much control and they might be frustrated that you want to turn the game into completely uh, other direction. So during the game, 
you will need to listen again. Listen in on the game. Listen to the characters. What are they saying? What are they doing? You can do this in different ways. You can either be the active game master, being on the stage, but you need to know what's going on. Where is the story now? Or the events now, because we don't have a story, as Lars was talking about earlier today. And where are the events heading? How far are we in the progression of the LARP? And during the game, you need also to follow the players. The first four points here, they are typical ways to follow in a Jeep game or in a free form LARP or in a black box LARP. Because it's not, I will talk about, I, I can mention now the shadowing. That was a little bit what we were doing during when our destinies meet. We were following you as players. We were walking around in a room. We were sitting down close by. We were sitting down nearby and listening in. That might not be possible during a fantasy LARP. You might not want people walking around not being a part of the game because that will destroy the 360 illusion. If you want a 360 illusion, it's very hard to have game masters in, in, in the actual play. But you need to follow the players around. Be near them, listen in. If you don't have a possibility and you want to be an active game master, then you have to need, need to have some kind of, of uh, tool to, to either film or have a control room where you can see everything that's going on. So you move around and see all of the characters. That is also important. Don't forget the ones sitting in the corner. They might be the ones needing the help. Don't miss the people in the middle of the crowd who are the most active. They might need the help as well. So make sure you see all of the characters, all of the players. Make a mental note of who you've seen and who needs more attention. Or, if you still want to have the 360 illusion, you can have the, uh, the, 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 the player character that, that, that you as a game master would play a character that has a reason to be in the center of the action or know things. It might be the, uh, the captain of the spaceship. You might be the psychiatrist who everybody goes to and tell their inner secrets and inner thoughts. This might not be a good idea, though, because you might be too much destroying the, the illusion of feeling that you control. The, the players might feel that they rely too heavily on you. So this is be careful of that role. Be careful of taking that role of being a character in the game. Yes. yes. Since you have had it presented, until that you were part, the game masters were playing the staff at the hotel where the wedding took place. And in that way, we were very much in the center of all the action, but without having any real influence on the game. Exactly. That's a very good way to, to get the information without uh, directly doing anything to it. And you can report out to some kind of, of, of game master room or something like that. We come back to during game listening. Once again, this is the most important part. I can't emphasize this much enough. This is the most important stuff if you've got a game master a LARP. Listen. Listen with every sense you have. It's not just listening with your ears. Listen with your eyes. Listen with everything. You're feeling. Follow the players around and listen in. What's going on? Where can we, where is the interesting part of this game? Who is doing what? Who needs more space or more focus? Both the player and the character. Maybe we've forgotten a character here who is a central part of the game, who's not getting enough attention. We might need Romeo and, Sh Romeo and Sh Juliet might need to be played up in some way because they've been forgotten. We're missing the, the plot that will, that will create the tension between the families. We might need to lift that plot. You as a game master must see that, realize that. But the, absolutely, after listening, the, the, the second most important rule is LARPs often look more boring than they actually are. Standing on the side of a LARP and looking at it, it might seem like people have a boring time. But you have an incredible amount of, of, of 
inner game where you're thinking, your, your character is going through hard time and you not, might not want to, you, you might not want to that be shown in some way, you're sitting in a corner and crying. Or in a long, this is especially important to know in a long run, if you have several days of LARPs, LARPing, if you have five days of fantasy LARPing, you can't have the orcs attacking the village every 20 minutes. That would be ridiculous. So you need the, the downtime as well. And you need the, the, the boring parts because they create the tension in the game as well. You can't have action all the time. And you don't need the action all the time. So during the game, you have pushing and suggesting as a game master. And this is where your job as a game master comes in if you, if you, want, if you are the active game master and do things during the game. You can move the players and not move them in a physical way maybe, but, but move the direction of the players and the characters into interesting situations. Help them into the plots, help them into the events, help them reach the potential of the game. To be able to do this, you need to have done a good job at the previous points. You, you need to know, you need to have listened in and know where the game is heading and what the game needs. You need to be very aware of every detail of the game. Otherwise, you, it's easier to ruin a game as a game master. And you need to know what the players expect. And this is why you need the pre-game game mastering. What do they is expect from you? And that has also to do with you, what you have been communicating with them. And you need to know where the characters are heading. And this needs, for this, you need to know the story very well as well. So you need to know what is expected at the end of the game. Where are we heading? If it's an edulard, for instance, you need to know what point do we want to make. This is a game about conflict handling. Then you need to put the focus on the conflicts, not on the love story. And a long list, which you can't see. This is some of the tools of the trade. I will go through them very, very quickly, just 30 seconds on each. These you will also find in When Our Destinies Meet, these tools. You will find it at the Jeep, in the Jeep, uh, jeepen.org. Uh, and these are just some of the tools. And you can create own tools, and you can use own tools. But I will go through them all, even though you can't see them here. Lights. Lights can make a huge difference in, on the game in many ways. You can change the mood of the game. Different lights use, affects different, it affects us in different ways. Very much so. Dimming it down, making the complete, the whole room red or whatever. It, it affects people more than you think. And you can, different lights can have different rules. We have the, the uh, delirium example. The red light was the insanity scenes. And the players knew this. When you turn on the red light, it's insanity. When you turn on the white light, it's normal uh, play. And you can shift focus on scenes. You turn down the lights here, and you turn up the lights there, and you get a different, a di different, different scene going on. And this is especially a good way to, to control a bigger game. If you have a black box game with a lot of people, this is a good way. Lights, because everybody sees it. It's very effective. Sound. Music can make a deep impact on players. I think you know that's from, from White Death. I'm looking forward to playing that tonight. I haven't played it yet, so I'm looking forward to it. But as, I, as I've heard, music is a big, big thing here, and it changes the mood of the game. And the game master controls the mood by changing the music. And you can use sound as special effects as well. You can uh, scare people. In a horror LARP, one of the best things I've experienced was, was a special effect, sound effect. The organizers had recorded nature sounds from a forest. And then before the game, they went out into the forest, put up speakers in the trees. And they played this sound, uh, this forest sounds. So when we as players went out, we could hear the forest sounds. We didn't know it was pre-recorded, but all the animals the real animals in the forest heard that this is something wrong. So they had left the place. And all of a sudden, the game masters removed the sounds 
and it became scary, scary silent in the forest. And we at first didn't know there's something wrong here. And then all of a sudden we realized it is quiet. It is unnatural quiet. Who killed all the animals? <laughs> Pre-recorded monologues or interviews, Delirium used it. Record in, on beforehand. This create this this uh, needs you need a, a good amount of time before the game. But you can record either players' thoughts or the characters' thoughts uh, before the game and play it during the game. When we have a scene where uh, Juliet talks about love, what is love? You can have you can play the monologue instead. <coughs> Shadowing. Following the players around as a game master, then it's a good idea to, if it's a big game that you have special clothes. This is often uh, the fact in, in 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 Nordic LARPs, wearing completely black clothes, and you're in shadow. You're not a part of the game. The players can't interact with you, but you can move behind the players. You can actually physically push them in that direction, push them into other players, move them around, or whispering things in their ears. But you must make clear. What are the things I'm whispering? Is it input to the players? Or is it thoughts of the characters? Or what is it? This is why it's important on beforehand having workshops. Letting them know what tools you will use and how the tools will be used. Flashbacks, flash forwards. You can have a scene where you, you can break the play and you can have a scene at another time than the present time. You can go back in history or you can look at a possible future. And this can create a non-chronological game. You can have, you can start with the scene, the, the, the ending of the game. You can, you can start the, the LARP with the final scene and then look back, why did we end up here? And you will play the scenes in a different way or in a different order. You can have monologues. We tried that at, uh, at When Our Destinies Meet, letting the characters tell their inner thoughts, and it's for the players and not the other characters. You can have focus scenes, we tried this as well in When Our Destinies Meet, so we don't need to talk much about that. Dream scenes. You can let the characters show the dream future, or the dream scenario, or the nightmare. We can play up a scene, let the play, cut the play, and I want to see what is your dream here. So instead of having the monologue, we can play it out. Oh, I would love if if the magical ponies started having a sword fight here. And then we do that. We can have time jump. Let the characters jump to another time. This is very much like flash forward or flashback. We use that in, in When Our Destinies Meet as well. Two hours later. Boom! And then we play that. Narrative voiceover. This can be done in a technical way or in an analog way. It could be me saying, and now the sun sets behind the Eiffel Tower, the bird starts to sing, we have a beautiful a, a harmonica player playing the harmonica, and we, yeah, it's fantastic and romantic and blah, 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 and it sets the mood of the game. Outside contact in the game. This is a very common way to do it, and it's easy to do even in big LARPs, even in, when you have thousands participants. You can send in letters, you can uh, uh, instructions, you can send letters or, or, or uh, telegrams, or you can have a chat uh, where, where you can chat with people. Black box. We've been talking a little bit about it. You can have a, a um, just a little loving, which we have been mentioning here which is a LARP about uh, the HIV outbreak in the 80s in New York. Uh, when you're headed a feather, you will have to go, you're invited to go to the black box, which is a separate place from the actual game, and you can act out the scene there. There is also a way for the game master to control everything. And then we move to the after game. After the game, once again, Listen to the players. What were their experiences? What are their thoughts? What did they experience? What, how do they feel? And 
the last part as a game master as you, that you can alter uh, the experience of the players. Ask different questions. And in making the players reflect on their preconceptions by letting them know more about the theme of the play after the games. This is often common as well in edu LARPs, where you, the LARP is just the start of a discussion of conflicts, whatever it can be. So, and you can alter as a game master if you ask the first question you ask after the LARP is, okay. This was a crappy LARP. What was the five worst things about the LARP? Then you will get a completely different answer and you will get the players to have a completely different feeling of the game instead of asking, okay, what was the five best things about this LARP? And when they go away, they will have a completely different feeling of the LARP, depending on what questions you are asked. And that is also part of the Game Master, the Game Master role. And to be able to be a game master, this is a very, as I've said, it's a rather short talk, uh, a very theoretical talk about something incredibly a, a practical skill. So the only way you can become a really good game master, you need the experience. You need to listen, but you need to, the experience. You need to be to a couple of LARPs. You need to game master a couple of LARPs. So if possible, find a GM mentor. Find someone that can help you and find someone during the, the first time to do it. Follow a game master. See what they do. Try to learn the trade by listening and, and seeing other game masters. And the last thing, don't panic. You won't ruin the LARP completely. You can make it. <laughs> Unless you kill all the players. Don't panic. You, can, you, you can't ruin the LARP, really. What you can do is making some of the players be a bit pissed off at you. But try things. Try, try, to, do, try to do stuff. Try to game master. And you will, after a while, see. And you will experience. You will learn, you will get the experience you need to be a good game master. But the most important things from this, listen. Listen to the game in every possible way. Listen to the players, listen to the characters. Number two, LARPs look more boring than they are. Lesson number three, don't panic. That's it. <laughs>